ticket prices that they have currently uh, strategized. Second is a mature viewership that they're currently facing with their TV viewers. And third is a domestically focused, heavily focused strategy. Now, the first is what is unsustainable ticket prices? Over the last 30 years, the Super Bowl ticket prices have gone tenfold, ten times. And their National Football League average ticket prices since 2006 went from $62 in 2016. Well, if you look at 2010, 76. But if you look at 2016, people that's a 49% increase in their prices. That translates right into their revenue. Why are they doing that? That relates to our second challenge, which is the fact that there's a decrease in viewership. More specifically, well, the first, the trends that you gotta see here is the fact that every year in every age group it's been decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. But more significantly, younger viewers are not seeing NFL as much. So, what do you do as a CFO? What do you do as a CEO? You must increase the price, and that's what they're doing, right? To maintain that revenue. Now, third is domestically focused strategy. United States alone accounts for 150 million viewers, fans, sorry, fans. So if you accumulate all the countries together, that still doesn't account for the United States. They're heavily focused on the United States. And funny, South Korea's in there. So how are we gonna solve this challenge? Well, first, it's the three pillars of success. First, profitability. Second, sustainability. And third is long living. Why is it three? Why is it three pillar, not two? Well, take a camera set, a tripod, for example. If you took one leg off, uh, apart, it will fall. It will fall. So it's a comprehensive consulting strategy that we have proposed. First is profitability. That is a short-term strategy that we have proposed. And what is that? Well, look at this chart. One shown during the NFL television broadcast, 35%. Is players standing around to clean plays? And how much is actual gameplay? 8.3%, nothing. And what's more interesting is the fact that players are standing around more than the actual NFL commercial itself. And NFL's known for its commercials. So, what do you see here? Left is NFL, right is Chelsea. And we'll understand why this is a serious problem. So, this is a Wall Street Journal study and they have some on average professional football game last three and 12 minutes long. Of which, 67 minutes, 67 minutes is standing around. And 63 minutes is commercial. So, taking reference, case study as an example. NASCAR, another US favorite playtime. What you see is not a car race. It is an advertisement for three hours long, 800 kilometers. And they're charging 35 million a piece. And the small ads that you don't see here, they're charging two million a piece. So, is it just those nine cars? No, you have 40 cars. It's three hours of advertisements. So these are the current uh, sponsors for different fields, and obviously NFL has great American companies, Nike, McDonald's, FedEx, and so on. And so our strategy is to put sponsorship into our jersey, this expensive real estate that is prime, that NFL is not currently using. And so NBA is using this right now with Kia. So another extreme example, right? This is prime real estate, more prime than the commercial that they're airing right now. So what's the monetary value of this strategy? Well, 
Chelsea believes the value of its brand has risen dramatically since the original deal was signed with Samsung in 2006. Let's skip the middle because they won the championship. It says the club is also looking to bring its sponsorship income more in line with the Premier League rivals like Manchester United. You guys all heard of Manchester United. Well, I talked to them, right? Which this season caught, kicked off with an estimated $80 million per season shirt sponsorship with Chevrolet. $80 million per season. What does that translate to us? That means if we took the lower end of the Premier League, which is Samsung, $30 million a year that you just saw with Chelsea, and the $80 million of Manchester United with Chevrolet, taking that middle part, 50, with 32 teams, because we are a holdings company, we're a partnership, is $1.6 billion per annum with almost no cost. Now, a very similar business to football is rugby. Rugby is an international sport that we'll be talking about in the second part, which is sustainability, oh sorry, which is a longevity, which is All Blacks. Have you heard of All Blacks? It's a New Zealand All Blacks team, very, very famous. They get a sponsorship from AIG, $15 million per year, okay? So if you took, the, if you took that very similar business, or very similar sport, times by 32, then you get $480 million per annum. No extra costs. So that is profitability, the most important. Second is our mid strategy, as important, and that is called sustainability. What does that mean? We saw this chart. Viewers are decreasing, not good, okay? But why is that? Because we believe that NFL has lost touch with itself. It has lost touch of what it is. It is a family time. It is a friend's time where they can gather together and spend time together, right? You start with the family. You have more family time as they grow up. And then when they go to college, they have college people who watch the NFL. And then you used to meet a girlfriend or boyfriend, and then you have kids, your kids are both Seahawks fans. And this, this cycle repeats over and over and over again. It's a positive feedback loop. It's a positive feedback loop. But the viewers are decreasing. The younger generation is decreasing. So we gotta find out what that is. And that's big data. NFL is not using big data. So why? How do we know that? Look at YouTube. Football, not even available, okay? But Facebook and social media shows that there is millions of people looking and interacting in these sports. So we gotta delve into what kind of people these are. What are these young generations? What do they like? How do we change our content so that we can cater to what they want? So we wanna do a joint venture or a partnership or even a B2B deal contracting, depending on, uh, is that all? and have a data sharing platform with Facebook or any other social medias so that we can understand about our clients, understand who the young users are, why are they not watching, and in return, it's very simple business, they earn ad revenues. And then, why is this gonna work? Well, first of all, we, exactly like the first case that we studied with Wasserman, we are a live content provider. We are the bottleneck. We're the only guys who can provide this kind of content. What does that mean? That means we have high bargaining power. What do they mean? They don't have a lot of bargaining power. because There's so many of them. So, we wanna produce a non-exclusive deal with these guys so that we can bring the lower end, the 18 to 24 year olds from 3 million viewers to 4.6 billion, uh, 4.6 million viewers in the next couple of years. And why? Because these people, there's two things that we know in life, right? That are, is true as we pay taxes everyone has to pay taxes and the time flows two things and when they when time flows they're gonna be older when they get older they're gonna have kids that positive feedback loop. And I think NFL needs to the management needs to understand that this is not just capitalistic game that they're playing it is a family time sport so that translated into longevity longevity so Global expansion is a long-term strategy for NFL to increase their revenue. So, we, I, I outlined the fact that the United States very heavily focused, but look at rugby. Rugby is international. You got England, Australia, New Zealand, France, blah, 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 blah. You got United States, Japan. We, have a, we even have Fiji, okay? We actually have a Fiji student in Kais too. He's in, he's in love with rugby. But what does that mean? They do, very, very popular sport all around the world. 
but even Korea too. How do we delve and make these people watch our sports more? Well, first, I think we should provide commentary in their own particular language. That's the first thing they gotta do. Okay, that's the first thing. And second, second how is what Steve Jobs said. Steve Jobs said, a lot of times, people don't know what they want until you show it to them, the supplier, the Keynesian way. So, we can learn from other sports players. The sports heroes from other countries can increase their home country's attention to the sports league. What does that mean? I'm gonna repeat it. A lot of times, people don't know what they want until you show it to them. It means like this. This is CNBC golf, okay? South Korean offering new era of LPGA dominance. Why did this happen? It's because back in the day, Park City won the LPGA, right? And that brought a lot of attention to the sport. And after that, we had a lot of people seeing her, seeing her as a hero, or more of a role model, and providing and planting those seeds into the, into the future of young children. That's what we gotta do as NFL. Because those are future revenues that we're not gonna be seeing directly, but we will see them into the future, the longevity and the sustainability side. So the conclusion is that all three must work in harmony. It is not a deferred strategy. These two are not deferred strategies, but they're accrued over time. However, we have a very good short-term strategy, which gives us an extra almost two billion, 1.5 to two billion dollars extra fresh revenue without any cost. Our cost of goods goes to souls after number one. And that means that our value of this company, which is a function of price and the quantity, quantity being supported by midterm and long-term strategy, and a short-term strategy, meaning the, uh, the revenue, that's why we suggest the short-term strategy as the, whole, uh, sorry, the as a, as a core strategy for now, but those other two strategies must come in tandem. They must resonate together. And that is our conclusion. Thank you very much. By the way, Charles, that was the most energetic energy field presentation I have ever heard of time for the past 24 years. Okay. Good. Uh, any background behind your presentation time? <laughs> Any special training or special experience like US Army? Or? <laughs> <laughs>